when we talk about throne, when I'm talking about throne, I'm not talking about a physical seat like you have in a palace. I'm not talking about a physical seat or decorated chair like you have in a palace where the king sits on. If that's what you think I am talking about, then you, are, you have already lost me in this message, in this series. I'm not talking about a physical seat that is majestic, that is well decorated, that is big, that you can sit on to show that you are enthroned. That's not what we're talking about. When we talk about throne, we're talking about the place of relevance, the place of impact, the place of significance, the place of prominence. We're talking about the fulfillment of your destiny. We're talking about success. We're talking about the fulfillment of your purpose. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. It dawned on me that I needed to bring clarity to that so we can be on the same page. So you're not thinking in your mind that when he said there is a throne for you, then you know, okay, maybe there is one big seat that God, I don't know, that's not what we're talking about, okay? It's important you understand that. And this morning, um, we'll be looking at the topic, fight for your throne. So you don't go and meet some capital to build you one throne. Fight for your throne. We're saying fight for your success. Fight for your greatness. Fight for your value. Fight for your what? So we're saying fight for your relevance. Fight for your destiny. Fight for your prosperity. Fight for your importance. That's all we're saying. Fight for your throne. Let's run through some scriptures. First Samuel chapter 4 and verse 9. First Samuel chapter 4 and verse 9. Be strong and quit yourselves like men. Be strong and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not servant unto the Hebrews as they have been to you. Quit yourselves like men and fight. The lot of the Philistines were charging their army. Three kings charging their army. The Hebrews have been a servant to us. If we don't fight, just like they have been servant to us, if they defeat us, we will become their servant. Be strong. And quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not servant unto the Hebrews, as they have been to you. Quit yourselves like men and fight. Father, breathe upon your word. Speak to us this morning. Give us clarity. Bring us into perspective of what you are communicating into our spirit. And bless everyone this morning under the influence of my voice. And those who will watch online or are watching online. I ask Lord that you will bless everyone. Thank you for the revelation of your word. We give you praise. For in Jesus' victorious name we have prayed. These guys have been servants to us. And they are ready to fight. If we don't fight, they will become their servants. So the difference between the throne and being a servant is fight. You will remain a servant if you are not a fighter. You will remain on the ground if you are not a fighter. You will never raise your head in life if you are not a fighter. Listen to me. Everything that God has given to you by redemption is actually yours. But you must fight to actualize them. So Paul said the prophecy that has gone ahead of you, they have gone ahead of you so you can buy them war, a good warfare. You can war, a good warfare. You can fight, a good fight. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. Must be a fighter. Must be a fighter. You must fight for your throne. There is a throne for you. Yes. That was what we heard last week. 
But this week we are telling you, even though there's a throne for you, you have to fight for it. Your destiny is beautiful. Your destiny is colorful. Greatness is invested in your destiny. But you have to fight for it. You don't just sit and begin to wish for every good thing to happen to you. You don't sit down and begin to daydream of, of a good life and expect that you will just find yourself in, in there. No! You have to fight for it. The only way we are not going to be subservient to the people of Israel is we must quit ourselves like men and fight. That's a good advice. That's a good counsel. That's a good motivation. That's a good motivation. If we will fight, we will not be servant. If we refuse to fight, we will remain servant. We will be servant to these people. Honey, you must fight. Especially in this time that we find ourselves. You must fight. This is not the time to lazy around. This is not the time to sit and you just feel that your wish will come to pass. No, 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 no. no. Even in the secular world, they said, if wishes were horses, <laughs> beggars will ride on them. If your dream must be actualized, if your pursuit must be successful, if your endeavor must be, must be, um, 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 must, must be advanced, then you must fight. You must fight. You must fight. Only you will fight with yourself. You will fight with situations. You will fight with people. Oh, when I say fight with people, I'm not talking about aggression now. You will fight with all kinds of stuff. I'm just going to share with you three areas you must fight. For you to break through. For you to, to, to receive your throne. For you to actualize your purpose. It's important. Every great man you see today that you celebrate... Every successful man you see today, one of the things you cannot take from them, they are fighters. Opposition will come. The vicissitude of life will come. And life will throw stones at them. But they are resolved to stand in the face of the vicissitude of life. The, the resolve, the determination to stand, to fight off every obstacle thrown on their path is the reason why they are successful. There is no human being on earth, past, present, or future, that is successful or will be successful, that is not a fighter. There is no body you see today on the throne that did not fight his way to the throne. There is no body today you see that you celebrate and you admire that is not a fighter. You can sit and gossip people. You can sit and run down people. You can sit and laugh at people. You can sit and mock people. You can sit and despise people at the detriment of your pursuit. Fighters don't have time to discuss people. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Fighters don't have time to discuss events. Time is crucial to a fighter. They fight on schedules. Fighters. Look at First Samuel chapter 17, verse 9. <laughs> this is Goliath the champion of God. Taunting the people of God. They came to fight. And men became lily delivered before this massive giant that was standing before them. And every morning he would come out and taunt them. And men were shivering like babies. And one of those rantings, he said in verse 9, If he be able to fight me and to kill me, then will we be your servants? But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. Sir, the way out of servitude is fighting. I gave you a scripture before. I have given you another scripture. 
Any man you see on the ground is on the ground because he refuses to fight. Any man you see whose head is not raised, his head was not raised, not because all hell was let loose against him. His head was not raised because he refused to fight. <laughs> because he refused to fight. There are people seated here. Nobody know your parents. I know you are emotional about these things. Hey, it's my father. I know my father is hard work, you know. My father tried. He just that things didn't gel for him. No, sir. Your father didn't try. He was not a fighter. If he was a fighter, he would have made it through life. Other people's parents and fathers who made it was because their fathers were fighters. And now the circle is repeating. Nobody knew your father. Your father didn't do anything of prominence. Your father never sat on his own throne, even though he was given one. And now as a young man, now as a young woman, you are also telling that part. You better rise and fight. Oh, I will not repeat the mistake of my father. I will rise and fight. Oh, if my father is not a good example of a man that is successful, if my father is not a good example of a great man, I rather not be him. If all it takes is a fight, then fight, I shall. Don't sit down and waste your time, young people. The rate at which time is like, I don't know, somewhere, somehow, it's like they went to adjust time and made it faster. You sleep and wake up. Before you sleep and wake up two times, you discover that your birthday has come. And then you go and, you see, I, uh, Satan deceived, you go and do photo shoot. That, that's what is, that's the in thing for this generation now. Photo shoot on Facebook. That's how they celebrate birthdays. In those days, men celebrate birthdays by achievement. Hey, one week, everybody's looking for a week. Want to do photo shoot. You do photo shoot. Then you, Facebook, one week, you're counting. Um, what's that thing they used to say? 24-7 is the code. Then go and put a picture on the day of Facebook. This is the D-Day. For who? You, of course. You know, the way my mind works, I don't compare myself with my, my colleagues. Mm. And I don't compare myself with people that, in quote, I'm better than. I compare myself with people that are ahead of me. So when it comes to comparison for me, it has nothing to do with age. For me, it has everything to do with achievement. I don't follow people because they are friends. I don't follow people because they are colleagues. I follow people because they have achieved what I want to achieve. And then I, 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 I don't go after their, their glory. I go after their story. How did they get here? I, I begin to observe their attitude, their character, the way they behave, the way they talk. Let me even go a little off the edge. Do you see celebrities uh, so that you don't think i am too spiritual do you see celebrities do you see permit me to use whiskey your davidos come to facebook to be announcing their their birthday that tells you that people who belong to that group they are frustrated human beings no 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 at least i don't know this is you know them do you see tiwa savage come to facebook seven days to her birthday to, uh, my birthday is seven days from now Six days to my bed, oh. five days to my bed, and put a car number, please. So, share gift to, oh, do you see Tony Elumelu? 
Or do you see your president, Bola Tinubu? Or do you see your governor? Or do you see, um, give me names. Or do you see um, Dele Momodu, the publisher of Ovation? You know? Okay, now let's, let's come to the kingdom. Do you see Bishop David Oyedepo, Pastor Chris Oyaklume? Ah, hey, since next to my birthday, oh, my people, oh, oh, yeah, oh. no, sir. These people don't even remember their birthdays. It is people who throw their picture up. <laughs> people they have impacted. People they have affected. People they have given value to. They are the ones that keep reminding them of their own birthday. They are too busy making life. Too busy creating impact to remember that their birthday is two weeks ago. Uh, two weeks from now. One week from now. Four days from now. You know why? They are creators. Innovators. Fighters. No, Papa, you are old school. That is the trend. <laughs> if I'm old school, then don't date to old school. I prefer to be old school and have achievement than to be new school and be nothing. Fight. Fight. Did I say there's anything wrong with photo shoot? No, sir. That's what I'm saying. Did I say there's anything wrong with you posting things about your face? Your... No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that's not all there is to your life. If your fulfillment starts and ends with Facebook and social media, honey, you better sit up. I keep telling you guys, from a very young age, I kept telling myself, I didn't come to this world to clap for people. That's why I hate football. Football didn't do me anything. The reason why I hate football is I can't understand why 22 people will be on the field with, with short nicker. Then everybody will sit in the stadium waiting for them. They are the last set of people to enter the stadium and the first to go out. Everybody, you have a stadium of 40,000 people. 40,000 people enter the stadium and wait for 22 people. Then the, those 40,000 people, you will see them dress dress Jesse, put the picture of the two people on, on, on their clothes. Pay! 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 40 pounds, 50 pounds to enter stadium. Some of you who are so poor that you can't go there to watch them. You now go to on the road where a vehicle can lose break and clear you because I'm watching football. Then 22 people, they will not pay to enter the stadium. They will pay them heavily to enter. They pay 22 people heavily to enter stadium that you pay to enter. Then you, you, VIPs, they will wait after you people are set to. Then they, they will not jump. Then when they enter, you will not, you, you not be shouting and clapping for them. You will not enter. Kick one round ball. Let that ball. 19 minutes. Then you will wait. They will not go out. Champions. Whether they pass or they fail, you wait for them. The two teams the two teams, one must win. Even the one that didn't win, you wait for them to go out first. And though they didn't win, they will pay them. They will go out. Before you will not start scrambling to go out of the stadium because of multitude. People get injured. People may even lose their life because they went to watch 22 people. So I asked myself from a young age, I don't want to belong to the people who pay to enter stadium to watch. I want to be paid to enter stadium to play. That's why I hate football. What do I fight? Paul said, I don't fight like one that beats the air. I don't fight like one that beats the air. That's what Paul said. So if my fight is not with the air, what do I fight? To sit on my throne. Number one, you fight the limitation in your mind. Fight the limitation in your mind. Look at me. You can grow beyond the capacity of your mind. You can grow beyond the capacity of your mind. If you don't fight the limitations in your mind, 
you will remain where you are and you will keep struggling through life. Your challenge is not with the environment. Your challenge is not with people. Listen to me. Satan is not even your challenge. Because just by praying, you can cast out Satan. Your challenge is that there is limitation in your mind. I didn't say your mind is limited. Mm -hmm. I didn't say your mind is limited. But you have created limitation in your mind. You carry a bad, a negative mindset. And that has become an opposition on your path. It has become a clog in the wheel of your progress. You need to unbox your mind. You need to unburden your mind from every limitation. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Limitation in your mind. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds. That's a challenge. Strongholds. They are the limitations you fight. Strongholds. Go to the next verse. Casting down imaginations. That's where the strongholds are. Your imagination. Genesis chapter 11 verse 6. Whatsoever they imagine to do. Whatsoever they imagine to do will not be restrained from them. That means your imagination is powerful. To bet progress. To bet prosperity. To bet wealth. To bet success. But now there are strongholds. Not on your path, but in your mind. There are voices in your mind telling you, you can't get it done. There are voices in your head speaking to you what God has not said. When God came down and Adam said to God, when God asked him, where are you? He said, I heard your voice walking in the garden and I hid myself. He said, why did you hide yourself? He said, because I'm naked. And God asked Adam, who told you you are naked? The last time I checked, Adam, I am your creator. I didn't tell you you are naked. Who told you you are naked? It means you have lent your ears to another voice. Who told you you are naked? Who told you you cannot be successful? Who told you you will remain poor? Who told you you'll be a servant all your life? Who told you you can't raise your head? Who told you you will remain poor? Who told you that the condition will remain like this? Who have been speaking to you? The voice is in your head. Limitations in your mind. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that has exalted itself against the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God told you, you have been accepted in the beloved. But these voices in your head, they are telling you that you are rejected. They are telling you that you are no good. They are telling you that the things you do is who you are. No sir, that are things that are highly exalting themselves against the knowledge of God. You have to bring them into captivity. Strongholds. I can't go to school. I can't build that business. I can't succeed in that business. Nothing good can come out of my life. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. Nobody wants to have anything to do with me. It's not true. Can I show you this morning? No matter how bad you think you are, there are people who celebrate you. No matter how... Excuse me, sir. Don't you see people shouting and rooting for evil, wicked, murdering... Everybody has a father. Even Agbero 
has fans. What happens to you? Be your own fan. Start loving yourself and see how the tide changes in your favor. You don't love yourself, you expect people to love you. You don't like yourself, you expect people to like you. How about the love of God? How about that God demonstrated his love towards you in that while you were yet sinner? A sinner. He sent his son to die for you. What, can, what, what, what kind of love are you still expecting? Beyond that. One who loves you beyond your frailty. One who loves you beyond your flaws. One who loves you beyond your fault. Turn the mind. The strongholds have told you. There are blockages. You can't pass through. Cast them down. The stronghold says you are not educated enough so you are not qualified for it. Cast them down. The stronghold says you can't succeed in that endeavor. There are strongholds. Cast them down. They are in your mind. The Bible says, the lazy man says there is a lion on the street. So he can't go out to do business. So that lion is in the mind. Okay. I think I've missed that scripture. Okay. I've missed this fight. 